Streaming now on TuneIn.com and Radio.com. AM 1220 KDOW. The views and opinions expressed by Rob Black and his guests are not necessarily those of KDOW or its management owners or advertisers and should not be construed as legal tax or investment advice. Always consult with the appropriate advisor before making any investment or financial planning decision. Insightful. Informative. Irreverent. We're ready. 1220 KDOW presents Rob Black and Your Money. Your source for breaking news, market updates, and successful investment strategies for the 21st century. Sounds like a great program. Getting you to retirement in today's market. So let's get on with the show. Taxes, family finance, insurance, the economy, technology, media, and entertainment. Rob is talking about it with you at 800-516-1220. So call in. We'll chat and uh, have some fun. Now to start your day with the latest news and market commentary. Here's Rob Black on the Bay Area's business leader, 1220 KDOW. Welcome in, Rob Black and your money. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial, money invested, and more. Any questions, we can try to answer them here on the show. Can't tell you that it'll always be a massive success, but I'll try. Dealing with some Monday morning grogginess personally, are you? Um, Wall Street had a big week last week, and sometimes that big move can leave you with a bit of a hangover. Grogginess. Uh, markets looked poised to move higher. Last week, we did get the stimulus bill. This week, do we get more stimulus bills or do we digest that we got that? We kind of digest it. Um, that's out there. Last week to this week, right? That's a big transition for some people. Take a look at the markets. There's nothing special happening. The Dow's down fractions after opening in record territory. The NASDAQ opened lower and is moving higher. Last week on the NASDAQ, we saw a big buy the dip. Hold on. Holy smokes. Excuse me. It's on time. That is disgusting. Um, when it rains, I get a little allergies from the, the pollens that come out. And it's been raining recently in California. But that's not your issue. Um, Dr. Fauci is concerned over a surge in European COVID-19 cases, saying the United States will be shortly right behind it, as we have been kind of trailing, oh, Italy's the worst, in the, oh, the United States is speaking of the worst. We've been kind of following the footsteps of COVID from Europe. But, eh, some people are saying, oh, they're just silly Europeans. Fauci saying, we may get that. Another surge, because if you take a look, Florida schools have been open since the fall, <laughs> like, Florida didn't budge, and they're looking like they're they're handling it pretty well. For a state with a lot of elderly, they don't have headlines like, all the elderly are dead in Florida. Please send grandparents down because we need them for the – no, it's they, they, Florida seems to be functioning. With that said, Fauci's warning. So I'm warning you a little bit of, okay, last week we got stimulus. This week we're getting a warning about a warning. What can derail this market? A fourth wave? Sure. I could really dent the pow or the effectiveness of the COVID relief package. I remember during the summer months of last year as President Trump was getting stimulus packages approved and through Congress on various levels, um, that could have been enough. But we got that second wave and that third wave. And that, that really sent the PPP loans and the small businesses, like, we were guarded. We were afraid. Maybe we shouldn't bring people back yet. Maybe this is going to play out the whole year, and it did. Maybe we could have shut down a little bit better the first time. Maybe we should shut down a little bit better the third time. I'm not really one to judge or to say. I'm just saying that's what the market might have to deal with. Um, a little bit of Monday morning grogginess, to be honest with you. Last week produced some rebound excitement in the stock market. It wasn't just the Dow hitting all-time highs. It was the S&P 500. It was the Russell 2000, the Dow Jones Transportation Average, 
the transportation average is one of the ones that I look at. I cheat. And when it's hitting a record high, I'm like, I go, that's pretty good for our economy. If the stocks are at all-time highs in the transport index, think of them as planes, trains, and automobiles. That's telling you that things are being bought and we're going to consume. When do you typically get in a plane? A couple months down the road, right? You buy your ticket, you wait four to six weeks, you get on the plane and go. That's how most Americans do it. So when you see the stocks there, the CEOs of those companies are, are talking to Wall Street every 90 days with their earnings season. And it typically goes something like this. Um, Southwest, it will say something like, hey, we're opening up a new flight to Cancun. And we go, woo! Now we're saying, how, how do you compare to last year? How do you compare to the start of the pandemic? How do you compare to the worst days of the pandemic? How do you compare to pre-pandemic? So there's a little bit more flushing out there. But the Dow Jones transportation average is telling me a lot of positive things. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this one out. TSA officers screen 1.35 million people at airports, uh, marking the single highest day since March 15th, 2020. Just a couple weeks ago, we were talking about a million a day. Now we're talking about 1.3 million a day. It's still 20% lower than the point we're at this time last year. Um, but it, in reality, it's 38% below where the pandemic, pre-pandemic, or like really pre-pandemic, like March of 2019. March of 2020, we kind of started canceling flights. We kind of started locking down. So we're 20% lower than that number of the locking down time. So we haven't hit the trough. The trough didn't happen until the summer where like no one was flying. April 14th, 2020, the day before tax day, a uh, number of people going through security checkpoints at airports was just 87,500. Now we're back to 1.35 million. Still, it's off. But to me, when you get on a plane, what do you do? You go to another city. What do you do when you're in that other city? You tend to go to restaurants and hotels. Sometimes you go like, hey, what's the nightlife here in this, this sleepy old town of Portland? Oh, you have riots? What's the nightlife like here in Seattle? And they're like, oh, oh don't, worry about the, don't, don't worry about the nightlife in Seattle. Worry, go, go to the fish market on, in Seattle. Like, oh, okay, okay, I'm supposed to go to a fish market. Got it. Um, but yeah, the transports are telling me the CEOs have some confidence because the stocks are holding up. And they're, in fact, hitting all-time highs. Not a, no, no, no. Record eyes, uh, 52 week guys. Some of them are, you get the idea. The index is doing quite well. I want to be very careful to not give improper thoughts. Um, because I don't want to taint a good story with bad information. But the transports, if if they're if they're doing well, it's telling you in six months from now, I, I might take a week off and be on an island. And come back and say, guess what, people? I know I told you that I'm not going to ever have another child, but I made a child. Did you make a child on the Hawaiian Islands with a native Hawaiianer? No, 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 no. But you get the idea. Like, we're starting to unlock. We're starting to travel. And next time I travel, I'm going to go large. Because I may never travel again if another pandemic hits, is my thought. Doesn't that sound good? I, I'm even willing to go to a luau. And if you know anything about me is Rob Black hates luau's. That could be my password on my computer because it Whoa. sums me up perfectly, right? Rob Black hates luau's. Except for I would have problems spelling luau's after I've had a drinky drinky or two. And I go, is that luau? Yeah, How do you do? No, maybe I'll come up with a better password. Anyhow, and anyway, you're listening to Rob Black and your money experience. Uh, I'm not going to be that guy. Um, but I could. Markets aren't doing much, but we had a big, big dramatic week last week with information, with news, with stimulus, with market snapbacks, with market highs, market record highs. We're doing pretty darn well. I, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Find me online at robblackshow.com. It's all 
Portions of our programming are brought to you by our good friends at Provident Credit Union with 21 Bay Area locations to serve you and your banking needs. Now, back to Rob Black and your money with your host, Rob Black, on the Bay Area's business leader, AM 1220 KDOW. Come and stay with us now. Welcome to Rob Black and your money. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money investing in four. Last week, the markets had an explosiveness to them. When I have bodily functions that have explosiveness, it's typically not something you want to be near, right? Rob's going to the bathroom and it's explosive sounding. Don't go in there for at least an hour, maybe two. Same idea with Wall Street. For me, when you see record highs on top of record highs on top of, guess what? Tomorrow's going to be another record high. I get a little bit nervous, and I, and that's a good thing that I still do. I respect money. As mortgage rates keep surging, experts say borrowers shouldn't delay. I think the low cost of money is one of the big reasons that the stock markets are at all-time highs. Our politicians have figured out that race is going to be a problem probably forever and that there's really no universal solution other than peace and love. So as they can't solve the problems of race in America or income inequality in America, one of the things they do is like, hey, let's just give out cheap money. Let's lower the cost of money so anyone who needs a mortgage can get a mortgage and that'll solve some of the income inequality. Make it cheap for rich people, make it cheap for poor people. It's a little cheaper for rich people. I'm not going to go into my political divisive nature. (laughs) But what I'm going to say is that politicians have made money cheap. And that has helped the stock market and the real estate market. So some people are saying right right here, right now, think about borrowing money if you're going to borrow money because right now it's pretty darn cheap. Fascinating. Moving forward, General Motors has joined a, f- a joint venture to pursue batteries for long-range electric vehicles. General Motors wants to sell electric vehicles that can travel 500 to 600 miles on a full charge in the near future. Good. Lithium metal battle battery technology from a company called Solid Energy Systems. It's worth flushing out that whole sector. Tesla is going to be the king of the electric vehicles, kind of like maybe Apple is the king of the the mobile phone. Whether they sell the most or they have the most amount of profit in it, depending on what you consider the king to be, there's a lot of room for winners in electric vehicles. There's a lot of competition coming on. The people who made the explosive uh, burst, Tesla, We'll have more competitors. Speaking about income inequality in the United States, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and other billionaires reportedly made over $360 billion plus during the pandemic. How was your year in the bubble? This is another thing that I, I want to throw down real quick. You know, we keep talking about Biden and $1.9 trillion stimulus. Americans saved over $2 trillion dollars during the pandemic, where we socked money away. Maybe we weren't going on vacation. I said, well, ah, put it in the put it in the bank, honey. We'll use it one day. Maybe we got a stimulus check and go, oh, well, I don't know. I'm going to get another one. So I'm going to put this one in the bank. But we have a ton of money in cash. We have a ton of stimulus coming. This is going to be a pretty exciting year. If enough vaccinations get in enough arms that enough people say, let's travel. But the wealth of U.S. moguls exceeded $360 billion during the pandemic. The wealth created. Um, Oracle and Dell's CEOs and executives, they profited just as much, too. The wealth of nine of the country's top tech titans escalated by $360 billion. Apple's market capitalization topped $2 trillion last year, making it um, the CEO of Apple a billionaire. Now you go... That doesn't surprise me. It should surprise you. Because he wasn't a founder of the company. But he's done very well at the helm of the company. 
for a very long period of time getting enriched with stock options, which is a thing we don't talk about very often here on the show of how tech companies kind of have an unfair advantage at times. They can say, let's issue a, a hundred shares to our CEO. And they, they call up the printing press and say, print a hundred more shares. So if we have 500 million shares, make it 500 million and a hundred. And next thing you know, that CEO has got a pay package that equals a billion dollars. Amazon uh, substantially profited both from the physical reality of, um, I need to wipe my tushy, and there's no toilet paper. Can we order it online and it brought to us? Sure. Amazon got that reality. More people ordering online, but they also saw their stock price go higher. Very, and then all the stuff we had to order. Um, I bought a Logitech keyboard, I bought a Logitech mouse, I bought a Logitech camera. Now I could tell you that I also bought like an Apple PC, uh, Apple computer. But what I'm telling you is, we all know about Apple. No one knows the accessories that go on computers, like Logitech, publicly traded company. But Amazon did the order delivery for me. But Logitech was the, like, there's a lot of winners in the pandemic. I still think we're going to look back in the years to come and just be in awe of what a transformative year it was. Almost dumbfounded. Rob Gronkowski, speaking of dumbfounded, this one has thrown me for a tizzy today. I don't drink, but I'm going to start drinking at 9 in the morning, right after, maybe even right at 8 before the show's over. What's he talking about? Over the weekend, Rob Gronkowski's first NFT card. Think of it as a 21st century trading card without the bubblegum. He pulled in over 1.2 million, almost 2 million total dollars when you see what the last one sold for. Last week, there was an artist named Beeple. And if you haven't seen this, it's, think of the name uh, Beep, B-E-E-P-L-E, Beeple. He does digital art, and it's not digital art that I like. Um, he does things like, you know, uh, a guy on a motorcycle with a big flaming sword cutting off a dragon's head. But he put like a thousand of them into one picture, like a thousand JPEGs that, that became a collage of all of his work. It's almost impossible for me to explain. That sold for $69 million last week. $69 million for basically a glorified JPEG on your computer that you're the only one who gets to play with it. But Gronkowski, his, he, he said, hey, I'm in on this game, too, because back in February, we saw NBA's trading cards digitally sell for over $200 million. And those were like highlights of LeBron James, he jumps, he dunks. Steph Curry from deep, 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 deep. It's good. And it's like maybe like a three-second clip. They sold $200 million of those. Get her done. This is going to be crazy. The amount of scams going on are going to skyrocket in digital. People are like, do you want your Tom Brady NFT? Tom Brady's like, I don't have one of those yet, but oh, someone just ripped it off. So 1.2 million with one digital card in that collection that was a one of one selling for $430,000 to the Grok. Wow, I got into the wrong business. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. Portions of our programming are brought to you by our good friends at Provident Credit Union. With 21 Bay Area locations to serve you and your banking needs, visit ProvidenceCU.org. Now back to Rob Black and your money with your host, Rob Black, on the Bay Area's business leader, AM 1220 KDOW. I do a little TV segment hit every day at 9.15 on Channel 4 Cron. You can find it at their website, kron.com, when they post it. Sadly, they only post it eh, 50% of the time. I also post it, and I'm going to be posting them more so to Rob Black's show down the road. I'm waiting for approval to relaunch a website and then relaunch a podcast coming soon. 
but it's taking a little bit longer to get the financial approval that I'm needing to move forward. Um, speaking of financial approval, Avatar, the movie, is just $7.4 million behind the Avengers Endgame for box office record. King of the world. That's where we are in the movie theater business right now. We're talking about Avengers Endgame and Avatar. Avatar is being re-released in China because they didn't get the phenomenon the first time around. They're getting in the phenomenon the second time around. And for the record, I think Avatar could be one of the worst movies I ever saw. It was like Dancing with Wolves, but in space. It didn't work for me. I see you. I'm not looking forward to Avatar 2, 3, or 4. But that was a big winner for Disney when they acquired 20th Century Fox. A lot of people didn't don't remember that Cameron's been making these movies for a long time on someone else's dime. And Disney's going to basically pay the goodwill for that dime, so to speak, and get the rights to Avatar 2, 3, and 4, and 5, and 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Actually, I just think it's 2, 3, and 4, but we'll find out. And those are going to start releasing soon, every other year. They're all being filmed at the same time. And the computer effects are added in later, I suppose. I don't really know what I'm talking about there. But I think the point of this segment is I kind of want to go buy a Hawaiian shirt. Because I'm looking forward to going to somewhere tropical. Just like the movies, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing Avatar 2, 3, 4, even though it was one of the worst movies ever. I still want to see it. So the Hawaiian shirt is kind of pent up, right? But Avatar's kind of pent up. And we're seeing the signs of like, this is where we're going to be there soon, it feels like. It's almost giddy. And, and what's ridiculous is a year ago, two years ago, we were like, ah, let's go to Hawaii this weekend. Or like, let's go next week. Let's just be impulsive. Now we're like, three months and we can go. I was talking with over the weekend. He goes, hey, when do you think fat guys like you and I are going to get our shot? And he's kind of feeling bad for himself for being a white guy who isn't 60. Uh, A puffy white guy who is in his 50s. He's like, I don't get any priority, do I? I'm like, no, I think you and I are in the last in line, so to speak. (laughs) We'll find out. But um, we're starting to really look forward. And that's what Wall Street is. It's a discounting mechanism. This time last year, the market took a horrible correction, thinking that for the next six months, we were going to go nowhere and do nothing with no political support to bail out the country. They got enough political support. The headlines were bad enough that Republicans and Democrats met and came up with some stimulus, and it kept us going through the summer into the fall. Then the election happened. We get a new administration, and we get, right before the election, another round of stimulus added on to the other two rounds of stimulus. President Trump was probably looking for some easy votes. Look, I got another stimulus check to you. I'm even going to sign it for you. And then we get a new administration. We get another round of stimulus. And this one almost is kind of a revenge feel to it of, oh, we're going to throw in things because now the Democrats are in control that the Republicans kind of throw in on the other side of the pandemic. We have so much stimulus coming. We have so much to look forward to, whether it's savings from individuals. We've got Avatar 2, 3, and 4 to look forward to. There's at least six movies that are being worked on in the Star Wars universe for Disney. There's a lot going on, a lot to look forward to. I believe WandaVision on Disney Plus just kicked off a new... The whole Avengers Endgame... I think if you take a look at the last 20 Marvel films, they all had one Infinity Stone reference or one Thanos reference, or they all had some sort of prolonged story. I didn't follow it. Sorry, I get lost in comic book plots or comic movie plots. Um, but Disney's starting another path of uh, a superhero 20 movie super fast, super gonzo crazy big thing i don't know i'm digressing 800-516-1220 to get your calls on the air anything you want to talk about we can talk about in the first hour i talked about 
reading the Detroit Free Press over the weekend and an article by Jamie DeLaro, uh, where he talked about Tesla has a disadvantage in the fact that they don't have enough service centers across America. In Northern California and Southern California, there, there's plenty. Each car worked out in a reasonable time frame and a reasonable location. But the article really said, hey, General Motors, Ford, and Fiat Chrysler, they've got over 9,600 dealerships where if you get a car broken, you can go get it fixed. If your car needs a new electric vehicle or electric battery pack, you can go get it installed there. Tesla's got 133. Now, Tesla's got the supercharging network. And will Tesla fire back after seeing, like, maybe that's one of our weaknesses? Will they, they prop that up? It's going to be interesting to watch because like, uh, the article is a great article talking about one guy in Michigan who owns a Tesla that's having some mechanical issues. And he had to park it in his garage and Tesla engineers flew out to work on it for him in his garage. It's either that or tow it to Tesla, right? When there's one in the state, eh. GM just launched a first edition Hummer electric pickup. $112,000. Ford is selling the Mustang Mach-E for $42,000, almost $43,000. Last year, Tesla delivered 500,000, 499,500 electric vehicles. A lot going on there. Patrick Mahomes is jumping into the NFT business with digital art auction. He's going to have six different pieces of art ranging for sale from 2500 to 15000 And there's going to be a mystery box. Patrick Mahomes is getting into digital cards. And what's interesting about digital, and this is, this is kind of fascinating, kind of. I don't know if I could tie this story together perfectly. Digital is ripe for piracy. We learned that with Napster music, right? An artist, Weezer, would come out with five albums. Rob Black would find out about Weezer. He'd love them. And Rob Black would be cheap and he'd go to Napster and steal all five albums. He'd be like, the music industry, they can't charge $15 for a CD. That's that's piracy. That's that, that's piracy. Who's the pirate now? The guy who's downloading it for free or the company who's selling it for a jacked up price? The beautiful thing about these NFT digital cards is if they want to make one, they'll make one. And you won't be able to hit the right button on your mouse and cut and paste it. You can take a picture of it. And I don't see what the big difference is at that point. But will there be a watermark on the picture? Uh, maybe. But the technology of limiting it to one. Do you know these cards are going to go from Patrick Mahomes and Rob Gronkowski to the NBA? It's going into albums right now. Kings of Leon, they just sold an album. They pulled in $2 million making it digital. And if you were one of the lucky few who got in on it, you get backstage passes for the rest of your life. If you're willing to give the artists $2 million. Can you dig it? Sean Mendez, Steve Aoki, Grimes have all recently received, uh, released exclusive digital goods on blockchain. The artist Beeple was sold at Christie's auction, a digital auction, for $69 million. What's fascinating about that is instantly people started thinking, well, he's the third richest or the third highest income producing artist who's alive. The guy works in the digital platform, so think Adobe Illustrator. And probably better than that, to be honest with you, but that's, that's my limited knowledge. This is going to get crazy hair fast because I could see Dungeons and Dragons releasing cards. I could see Pokemon releasing cards this way. And when you decide to sell it, you're going to have to give someone like a 16 digit code. You're not just going to be able to afford the email. You're going to have to afford the blockchain that has the picture in it. Anyhow, um, it brings up a, a great question. If you're an artist today, should you still be working in oil and pastels and watercolors? Or should you go digital? When here's the thing, for instance, I like an artist named Josh Agall, right? Shag. 
and I've bought some of his originals. I'm not really a guy who likes to buy prints. Um, lithographs, I don't like that. To me, the lithographs are cheap. And it's a list, it's one of 500 lithographs that were pressed and will never be pressed again, but there's 500 of them. And the only thing stopping you from press, like, no, I like one of one. That's an original. So interesting that Grok came out with one card of one and then four cards of 350. He's not a dumb man. He may not come across as Shakespearean, but he's opening the door for a lot of money for a lot of players in a lot of industries, music, television, art, sports, collectibles. Only just begun. It's a gold rush. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial. Visit Rob Black online at robblack.com. Now, back to Rob Black and your money on AM 1220 KDOW. that I think it'd be worth pursuing is property management. I hear horror stories about bad property management and I hear stories of bliss and heavenly rejoicing on great property management. Property management is probably means different things to different people. If you check out into the, or if you check into the idea, like, I'm going to buy a duplex, I'm going to renters, and the renters are going to pay the rent, and I don't have to do anything. I just have to sit there and collect a check. Well, it's not that easy. The renters have to pay you the check and take relatively good care of the property, or you're going to have to do pay for upkeep, right? And that's when you start losing money, making money. It's all in the details. If my kids were not prone to math and science, I, I, a couple things I'd push them in. I'm like, hey, maybe be a vet or a vet assistant. My kids have big hearts. They would help people. Like I, I couldn't be a vet myself. Dealing with dogs that get hit by cars, I couldn't deal with it. I would lose my mind. But property management is something I, I can talk to my kids about and say, okay, learn to f- use a wrench and a screwdriver and you know, help keep up the property. And you'll get owners paying you a good salary to manage their property. Or if you want to buy into real estate, you could manage your own property. Like, Talking about property management as a career, I don't think it's going to go away. Now, Vacasa is not Airbnb, but they want to be Airbnb because Airbnb is going to be huge as far as making their owners money, <clears throat> the investors. And a lot of us are looking at Airbnbs for Thanksgiving and Christmas as our, we're going to go, let's get all the family together in a big house. So Vacasa announced it's going to acquire a company called Turnkey Vacation Rentals. Both companies focus on rental management, and the deal should boost Vacasa's efforts as it considers an IPO. The acquisition brings another 6,000 vacation rentals to Vacasa's Vacasa's portfolio. We've run out of words. We're just making up words right now. So Mikasa, Sukasa, Vacation, Vacase, Vacasa. So Vacasa already has 25,000 properties. I talked with them a few years ago. I I haven't kept this a secret, but I bought a property in the Tahoe Truckee area. And in the back of my mind, I I wasn't struggling financially, but if things didn't work out, would I be stuck with a million-dollar property on my hands or would I rent it out six to eight times a year? If you rent out your vacation property for 4th of July... Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, spring break, and one week you're in the ski season, that will pay your whole year of mortgage for giving up for six weeks. Then you can live in it for 46 weeks, or you let it be dormant, or you can get extra cash flow off those 46 weeks. But those six weeks are premium weeks. 
first week of summer, last week of summer. You get the idea. And BK saw they, they, they did a good pitch to me. Okay, here's exactly what you're going to need. And, you know, if you want to turn in a rental, you do this, you do this, this, and this, and this. And then I, I started thinking about it and money got a little bit better. And I was like, no, I don't really want to go that direction. Do I really want strangers in my bed? Because I've been on vacation before in other people's bedrooms <laughs> with a, like an Airbnb. And I've done some things like, oh, I got to wipe my butt. There's a blanket right there. Why not use that instead of toilet paper? I don't want to actually get up and it's cold. Walk all the way across the bathroom. And talk, no. I know you're saying, is that a true story? And it's not a true story. But that's how some people approach rentals. And I'm like, no, I don't know if I really want that. But the Casa acquired one of their competitors because they're seeing what's happening with Airbnb and the demand. And they're pushing, they're pulling their, their business model forward a little bit. And they're also cutting out a lot of the competitors. I will say this. I kind of want to check out Santa Fe, New Mexico at some point. I hear it is a charming, charming part of the country that has ideal weather. I know you're saying, is he kidding or not? It, ideal weather, like never a snowstorm, but also not the hottest parts of the world. Markets are going sideways to nowhere today. Last week was a glorious week. Today, a little bit of pressure comes off the price of oil, $65 down to 64 I don't like oil. Oil starts making me nervous around $65, $70, $75, $80, because that's when it starts to slow economies. But it will be interesting coming out of this economy, too. And how do we, uh, uh, how do we get to the levels we were at in the past, for lack of a better word? Gold straight a little bit higher today, 1724 an ounce. Silver's trading sideways. Gold would be very interesting if inflation really picked up. Bitcoin's down 3000 bucks today, sitting at 56784 after catching a record of 61, 62000 earlier over the weekend. Um, other big stories out there of no lots on the reopening. Markets snap back to record highs. Tesla was up 26% last week. What a week. Down and then up. It, it, I mean, it was a yo-yo for a huge company. It's telling you that this is it's nuts how much these things can move. Today, we're seeing mega cap stocks like Apple, Facebook, and Tesla all do well and lead the markets. But we're seeing a little bit of uh, take it off the table on Amazon, Microsoft. Not a lot of overall direction. The airline industry is huge today. TSA data over the weekend showed the number of passengers screened last Friday was the most in over a year. So maybe you think Spirit Airways or Southwest, or maybe you think where are people flying to? And you're thinking Vegas and MGM Resorts. There's a way to play the investment world. There's always a bull market, to quote Jim Cramer. You just got to go out and find it. We have a ton of stimulus coming, plus a ton of savings that will be unwound into spending in the future years. What else do we have to look forward to? I don't know. 5G is already here. We'll talk about that theme and more on Rob Black and Your Money. Find me at robblackshow.com. Mm-hmm.